Once a hornet, always a hornet. The Fullerton College football team began the 1982 season as the defending South Coast Conference co-champs. A familiar position for the Hornets, the 1981 title was their 12th under the winningest active J.C. football coach in the nation, Hal Sherbeck. Bolstered by the return of veteran performers like Larry Jackson, Brian Noble, and Rob Heller, the Hornet coaching staff prepared the team for what would again be one of the toughest J.C. schedules in the country. But athletes coming to Fullerton College expect a tough schedule and expect to be winners. The winning tradition of the Hornets include two national championships, a 47-game winning streak, and 84 junior college All-Americans. Maintaining the heritage of great defensive teams, the 1982 edition showed much promise as the Hornets sought to again capture all of the league's defensive honors. Under the tutelage of defensive coaches Al Fiola, Jeff Jesperson, Jeff Barton, and Bob Mitchell, the Hornets would build on the accolades of the 1980 and 81 defensive squads that led the conference in rush, pass, and total defense. This would be a rebuilding year for the defensive secondary of the Hornets, yet this 82 squad would again lead the SCC in pass defense. With all four secondary positions open, the Hornets found several prime candidates. Starters J.C. Pearson and Marty Van Voorhis would combine for 11 interceptions, and hard-hitting Garrett Breeland and Roar Kelly formed the SCC's best. With additional contribution from Sosa, Owens, and Bradford, the Hornets secondary terrorized quarterbacks to the tune of 18 interceptions. While the secondary continued their aerial thievery, the defensive front seven of the Hornets would strike fear into the hearts of opposing offenses. With returning starters in defensive end Brian Noble and linebacker Rob Heller, both of whom would be named to the 1982 All-American team, third-year defensive line coach Jeff Jesperson had the nucleus of another fine defensive unit. Coach Jesperson relied on Carbone, Taplin, Schweitzer, Ursiola, Bickerstaff, Martinson, and Brad Albert on the front line, with Ken Copeland and Monty Taylor anchoring the defense at the linebacking position. The front seven would lead the conference in total defense and amass an incredible 57 quarterback sacks and 19 fumble recoveries in 1982. Continuing the tradition of outstanding defensive players, Brian Noble was honored as the 1982 South Coast Conference Defensive Player of the Year, the third straight Hornet to receive that award. While the Hornet defense was turning out the lights on their opponents, the potent Hornet offense used the opportunity to strut their stuff and strut they did. The offense racked up over 3,700 yards in total offense and averaged 22.5 points per game. With the return of their game-breaking tailback Larry Jackson, a 1,000-yard rusher in 1981, the Hornets offensive coaches expected to field an exciting offensive team. Even though Larry missed four games and played with a shoulder injury for most of the season, he led the Hornets with 491 yards rushing and five touchdowns. In his two-year career, in games that Larry Jackson played in, the Hornets had a record of 17-1. and one. With injuries to both Larry and starting fullback Arnold Thomas, the Hornets showed their depth at the running back spot with solid performances by Gil Alvarado, Ron Culleton, John German, Matt Palmer, and number 32, Fred Christinger. The trio of Hornet hopefuls competed for the quarterback spot with Melody Land's Troy Bodine rising to the top. In an injury-shortened season of four games, Troy threw for 1,107 yards and nine touchdowns and had a 57% completion record. In an abbreviated but brilliant Hornet career, Troy added more honors to the great tradition of Hornet quarterbacks that include NFL performers Dave Wilson and Steve DeBerg. How many other junior colleges can boast of two quarterbacks in the NFL? When Troy Bodine went down for the season with a broken arm in the Mount Sack game, Hornet faithfuls were concerned about the future of the 82 season. But Hornet quarterback and receivers coach Marv Sampson had plenty of depth in La Mirada's Vern Harris and Kennedy's Gary Rulin. Not only did sophomore transfer Vern Harris fill in, he fit in. With over 1,325 yards in passing and 12 touchdowns, Vern showed the Hornets were in good hands. 
teaming up with the quarterbacks were some of the best pass catchers in Hornet history. The Hornet receivers would riddle opposing secondaries with aerial acrobatics and spectacular catches. Leading the pass catching parade was a sophomore sensation out of Orange High School who became known as the Fullerton Flash. Wide receiver Joe Kelly shredded opposing secondaries for 47 receptions and an average yardage per catch of 20.6. Joe also caught eight touchdown tosses to lead the Hornets in scoring while earning junior college All-American honors. Pairing up with Joe Kelly to form a 1-2 pass combination that assaulted the Hornet record book was a young man from Brea High School who switched from the wide receiver position to tight end. This talented sophomore dazzled Hornet fans with his clutch performances. Troy Sweet demoralized Hornet foes with 34 receptions for 666 yards and seven touchdowns. Ask offensive line coach Glenn Thomas and tight end coach Dick Campbell to point to the primary reason for the Hornets' success, and the target would be the O-line. Coach Thomas had one of his best in a decade of coaching at Fullerton College. With a bulwark of center Nick Otovac, tackles Jeff Buffington and Dell Helms, guards Jason Kong and Mike Serrano, the O-line opened up gaping holes for the runners and provided a wall of protection for the quarterbacks. In 1982, the Hornets led the always tough South Coast Conference in total offense. The Hornet coaching staff had all the wheels oiled and ready to roll for their initial 1982 encounter with their longtime county rivals, the Dons of Santa Ana College. Hitting former Hornet player Dave Ogas against his former mentor, Hal Sherbeck, this game represented the oldest JC rivalry in the country. The series record was tied at 27-27-4, but Fullerton would break the tie with a vengeance as they coasted to a 37-0 shellacking of the Dons. The Hornets opened up the scoring in the first period with a 25-yard field goal from Frank Arriaga. Meanwhile, the defense continued to stop the Don's offense in its tracks. Fullerton made it 9-0 on a 9-yard TD toss from Troy Bodine to Troy Sweet. The score widened to 23-0 on TD receptions by Joe Kelly and Troy Sweet in the second period. He sends Baca back in motion. Bodine back to throw. Got good time. Got a man over in the middle. He's got Joe Kelly at the 30. Joe Kelly at the 20. 10, 5, touchdown, Joe Kelly. Bodine back to throw. He's got a man open in the middle. And Troy Sweet makes a fine catch in the end zone. Troy Sweet. The Hornet defense continued to dominate the Dons as they held them to 95 yards for the game with an amazing minus six yards rushing. The offense closed out the scoring with touchdowns by Kelly and a run by Ron Culleton for a 37-0 victory in their season opener. Scoring a hard-fought 16-9 win over Citrus, Hornet prospects were diminished by the loss of tailback Larry Jackson with a dislocated shoulder. It would be only one of many crippling injuries and would provide an opportunity to show the pride and character of this year's squad. Determined to run their record to 3-0, Fullerton entertained the Renegades of Bakersfield, one of the nation's top teams. This yearly encounter always brings out the best in the Hornets, and the 82 matchup would be no exception. The Fullerton defense set the tone for the evening with spirited defensive play on the Renegades' first possession. The Hornets parlayed the Fullerton connection of Troy Bodine to Joe Kelly for a 13-0 first quarter advantage. The Fullerton Flash continued to marvel with an outstanding third quarter performance, including an 80-yarder for a touchdown.
While the defense continued to pummel the Bakersfield Renegades, the offense converted for another tally with a 39-yarder to Gil Alvarado. With a third quarter TD toss from Harris to Sweet, the Hornets concluded the night's scoring barrage and earned a decisive 35-21 victory, a victory that vaulted them into the position as the number one ranked junior college football team in the nation. Yet, after suffering injuries to Larry Jackson, Troy Bodine, Arnold Thomas, and Brian Noble, Fullerton lost two straight with a 38-14 loss to Pasadena and a conference opening heartbreaker at Mount Sac, 13-10. A week off with a much-needed bye gave the Hornet coaching staff time to put the Hornets back on the path to winning. The Orange Coast Pirates came to Fullerton Stadium with thoughts of dealing the Hornets their second conference loss in a row, and the Bucks' 10-0 first quarter lead had the Hornets' backs up against the wall. The season would be won or lost on this game. Returning from a four-game hiatus, Larry Jackson lifted the Hornets with a patented 30-yard burst for a TD, cutting the Pirate advantage to three. Hornet hopes dimmed when their gifted tight end Troy Sweet left the game with an arm injury. His return for this game was doubtful. Coast widened the scoring gap to 13-7 with a 41-yard field goal and threatened to break the game wide open as they went for all the marbles inside the Hornet 2. Given second life by the defense's courageous goal line stand and aided by a pirate penalty on a fourth down effort, the Hornet offense poised to strike. Once again, Joe Kelly kept a Hornet drive alive. Forty-six seconds remained, and the ball game and the season was all riding on a fourth and 22 for the Hornets. All the Pirates had to do was hold on for one more down, and the upset would be theirs. But not on this night. Not against a Hornet team that had battled injury and adversity throughout the season. And who should provide the 11th hour thrills but injured tight end Troy Sweet. Back is Harris. Pressure on. Harris over the middle. He's got Troy Sweet. He's got it. Touchdown, Troy Sweet. Touchdown, Troy Sweet. What a play by Byrne Harris in the Fullerton College runs. Look at the Hornets stack them up, but they've got to get everybody off the field now. They have 30 seconds for the PAT. Riding the exuberance of their gutty come from behind victory over Orange Coast, the Hornets manhandled Grossmont 38 to 10. Setting up a rematch with the team that handed the Hornets their only defeat in 1981, the San Diego Mesa Olympians. In another must-win situation, the Fullerton Hornets relied on the passing of Vern Harris and the running of Larry Jackson and Fred Christinger to a surprising 23-0 halftime bulge. While the offense racked up 23 first half points, the defense was shutting down the potent Olympian attack. The Hornets tallied 13 second half points to shut out Mesa 36 to zero. Only the second time San Diego had been shut out in 12 years. College Television presents Hornet Football. Tonight, the Fullerton College Hornets versus the Golden West College Rustlers. Al Sherbeck's Hornet team was 6-2 and two and riding tall on the saddle as the upset-minded Rustlers of Golden West rode into Fullerton District Stadium for a good old-fashioned Orange County shootout. Much to the chagrin of Golden West, the Hornets did some rustling of their own, corralling their rival's potent offense.
not once to turn their backs on opportunity, the Hornet offense took dead aim for 20 first quarter points. Freshman Matt Palmer joined the TD hoedown, and Frank Ariaga booted a 37-yarder as the Hornets defeated Golden West 30-6. The Hornets were on a roll as they traveled to Falcon Stadium to seal a bid against Saddleback in the Orange County Bowl. <laughs> Donning their traveling whites, the Hornets found the road to the Pony Bowl temporarily blocked by an inspired Cerritos team as the fired-up Falcons attempted to put an end to the Hornet season with a fine first-half performance. The Hornet offense struggled in the first two periods of play as they went into halftime trailing 7-0. After a Frank Ariaga field goal cut the deficit to 7-3, the Hornet defense stole the lead as J.C. Pearson picked off a Falcon pass and returned it 15 yards for a touchdown. With a one-yard lunge by Fred Crissinger, the Hornets put a lock on the Pony Bowl bid as they defeated the Falcons 17-7. They had overcome their last obstacle and now would look forward to proving who was the best in Orange County. The long-awaited matchup featuring two of the country's top J.C. football programs would finally be realized as Hal Sherbeck's Fullerton Hornets and Ken Swearington's Saddleback Gauchos would do battle for the county's bragging rights in the Orange County Pony Bowl. Pitting the north of the county against the south, this J.C. football version of the Civil War would feature some of the best football players in the state. Fullerton would again be relying on a conference-leading defense that had held their opponents to an average of eight points per game in their last six regular season encounters. Behind the defensive leadership of Brian Noble, Tyler Carbone, and Rob Heller on the front seven, and a league-leading secondary, the Hornet defense was set to do battle against a Saddleback team that averaged 35 points per contest in 1982. Meanwhile, the Hornet offense prepared to face the Gaucho defense, a defense that had led their team to victory in 25 of its last 26 games. But the Hornet offense was on a roll, averaging 24.7 points and setting a school record in passing yardage with an average of 273 yards. With a fully recovered Larry Jackson, the Hornet offense was pumped up and ready to play. Capitalizing on a first possession fumble by the Gauchos, Vern Harris was given plenty of time by the O-line and connected on a swing pass to Fred Christinger for a 16-yard TD. This reception by Troy Sweet set up a 32-yard Frank Ariaga field goal to widen the Hornet margin 10-0. The Hornets had all of their signals straight as they executed their defensive game plan to perfection. Tailback Larry Jackson saved his best for last as he ran for 134 yards on 21 carries and the Hornet lead increased to 17-0 on Larry's one-yard TD. Brent Hoover converted the PAT. Quarterback Vern Harris had the hot hand as he hit Joe Kelly with a 54-yard scoring strike, and the route was on. With the Hornets thoroughly dominating the first half, Saddleback's Ken Swearington searched for ways to stop his opponent's explosive football machine. During the 1982 season, the Hornets special teams had made outstanding contributions. Mark Baca applied the crushing blow as he returned a gaucho punt 48 yards for a TD and a 31-0 Hornet advantage. In the second half, runs of 9 and 26 yards by Jackson set up the Hornets' last tally. 
a 25-yard TD pass from Gary Ruland to Fred Crissinger to give the Hornets an incredible 38-6 Pony Bowl victory. The final seconds were ticking away on another successful Fullerton Hornet football season. It had been a season of trials and triumphs, but perhaps the words of Hal Sherbeck's post-game locker room talk expresses it best. Very, very proud of the people I work with. Yep. Defensive coaches, offensive coaches did a hell of a job preparing the scheme, and they take two people to execute. We believe in you, we love you. Those are the things that are important. We don't forget those things. It's been some hardships and some things that have happened. I think everything else, just if you stick together and just realize what you've accomplished tonight and this season, this can stay with you for the rest of your life. <laughs> While many of Hal Sherbeck's players go on to be Bruins, Huskies, Sun Devils, or Trojans, for the rest of their lives, they're always a Hornet. Hornet is something special. It's something that carries with it a great amount of pride, a tradition of excellence, and the knowledge that you're part of a family that cares about you long after your playing days are over. The 1983 Fullerton College coaching staff extends an invitation to young men who would like to carry on the winning tradition that being a Hornet brings with it. It's not going to be easy, but fighting for a starting spot on the 83 Hornet squad could be one of the biggest challenges you've ever faced. If you feel you're up to that challenge, and the thought of being a Hornet appeals to you, then contact head coach Hal Sherbeck at 871-8000, extension 345, or write to Fullerton College Football, 321 East Chapman Avenue, Fullerton, 92634.